So one of the patients in the comments, they're 74 years old and they have a PSA that's basically almost about to between 3.9 and 4.2 and they have a Pyrads 5 and they're wondering should they get their PSA rechecked or should they get a biopsy? Well that's an interesting question because they're asking what's the relative value in prostate cancer screening of uh, MRI information versus uh, blood test PSA information. And if the MRI is properly done, the value of the information from the MRI is 30, 50 times more accurate than the information from the PSA. We look at PSA in broad categories of low, intermediate, and high risk. So that means that PSAs between 1 and 10 don't really tell us that much. 1 to 10, 10 to 20, and 20 and above. So it's even though they reported out as point, you know, 3.7, you know, 2.25, it's something that varies a lot and it can uh, be up because the prostate's big or because there's inflammation or maybe cancer, who knows. So this person has a high normal PSA. I'm not sure what led them to doing the MRI in the first place, but they did an MRI. When an MRI is properly performed, the, the PIRAD system, uh, a PIRADS 5, for example, would indicate that there's about a maybe 70, 75% chance that there's clinically significant prostate cancer. There are, is a time when people get older, say in their 80s, and uh, we'd say, well, most people in their 80s have prostate cancer. Maybe we'll just do an MRI in six to 12 months, make sure the spot's not growing, make sure the PSA is not changing. And uh, maybe we wouldn't do a biopsy in someone who's quite a bit older. But in the 70, early to mid 70s, I think that uh, one would feel pretty obligated to, to do a targeted biopsy of that spot and see if it's a Gleason 7, 8, 9, or 10, uh, which we would probably want to treat. The PIRAD system uh, is great if the image acquisition is good, the MRI is done at the quality center, uh, the doctors and the technicians are trained to, uh, uh, to read out the uh, images accurately and develop the images properly. This is a rather long answer to your question, but I think it's an important one because people do tend to weigh PSA and uh, MRI information like they're equally important, and they certainly are not. MRI is a very specific and accurate test for prostate cancer. PSA is a general check engine light type of a um, rough sense that maybe something needs to be looked at further. When it comes to the PIRAD system, how does the grading system work? You know, is it one through five, and when, at what point does it become clinically significant prostate cancer? So the, uh, it goes, yes, it doesn't go from one to five. So five, five is the, this patient uh, indicated was, uh, was the highest level, and that's why I said if you uh, do a targeted biopsy properly and you hit the spot with a needle, the, uh, it's about a 70, perhaps 70, 75% chance that it will be some type of a cancer you want to know about and you would want to treat. A PIRADS-4, we're probably looking at about a 40% chance that the um, a needle uh, biopsy would show uh, clinically significant prostate cancer. PIRADS-3, maybe about 20% chance. Uh, and then ones and twos are same as if you just randomly stick needles in prostates. So uh, ones and twos often aren't even reported because they don't really indicate anything. Threes are sort of in the transition where, depending on how uh, urgently you feel a need to buy, uh, make a diagnosis, how big the spot is. Um, uh, many people are doing biopsies of PIRADS threes, definitely biopsies of PIRADS fours and PIRADS fives. And uh, it's just a matter of, of risk and then uh, counting that risk against the risks of, uh, you know, uh, unnecessary treatment and, and things like this that uh, um, that ensue when when you have this information. There's a spot. What do we do about it? Uh, it should be mentioned too that it's important that um, if people have a spot diagnosed on an MRI, that they avail themselves of a center that knows how to do targeted biopsies properly. Uh, we have been advocating simply doing targeted biopsies. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the centers are not very confident in their targeting bi biopsy skills, and so they like to do a random biopsy and a targeted biopsy at the same time. So they end up getting 12 to 20 cores of their prostate taken, and they take significant risk of life-threatening infections. Uh, they're biopsying through the rectum. So it is important to find a place that's experienced doing targeted biopsies, and uh, in general, unless there's some other uh, reason to be concerned, uh, I recommend just biopsying the, the, the lesion alone. It's much less dangerous and uh, far less traumatic.
When it comes to, you know, we have the Gleason grading system and we have the sizes of tumors. When it comes to like, for instance, Gleason 6 prostate cancer, would that, would those tumors be smaller than maybe a Gleason 9 as far as how the growth rate goes or um, what type of pr proportions do we see there? It's important also to talk about the relative importance of the grade on a biopsy and the size of the tumor. So the size of the tumor can be determined by how big the spot is on an MRI. It could also be determined in the men that do have random biopsies. I don't advocate them, but they're still very popular uh, in terms of how many needles have cancer. So you can get a rough sense that you know, if eight of the 12 uh, biopsy cores have cancer in them, then it's gotta be fairly large or at least several tumors are present. So if you look at what's more important, the grade or the size, because they're both important. Big tumors are more concerning than small tumors. But the grade is much more important than the size. The grade determines the likelihood of spread. The size can determine the likelihood of sped, spread, but it's probably more of an indirect in the sense that the larger and larger tumors are probably more likely to have some occult higher grade disease somewhere. So the lower grade tumors, no matter how big they are, don't spread. The higher grade tumors uh, spread more frequently. Really, that's all that counts in the cancer world. Does it spread? How quickly does it spread? Where does it spread? How frequently does it spread? Um, and will it spread someday? And how likely is it to spread someday? Those, it's all about metastasis because if the cancer stays quietly uh, growing inside the prostate, it doesn't hurt anybody. Men can have big prostates, they could have big tumors in their prostates and they would never know it. It's when it spreads that it becomes a problem. You mentioned that um, you know when somebody gets a biopsy, there's a number of course positive. So what is the significance of course positive? And does it really matter if the prostate cancer is on a certain part of the prostate, so base, apex, posterior, or anything like that? I mean, it's a surrogate for how big the tumor is. Uh, not only is it how many cores are positive, but each core is maybe about an inch long. And so if it's just a speck of cancer in the core versus the whole, can the whole core is replaced by cancer. So the percentage of uh, core replacement is, a, is one metric. And another metric is how many cores are, are involved and how, how, how extensively they're involved. It matters. Uh, the, uh, the size of the tumor uh, is, is a prognostic indicator. And uh, does it matter in terms of treatment selection? Certainly, uh, if all the cores are on one side, patients then could be candidates for focal therapy. Uh, if the cores are scattered bilaterally, uh, then um, whole prostate treatment would be required. And whole prostate treatment is going to be potentially more toxic and cause more side effects than just simply getting focal therapy. Now, in your near years of experience, you've looked at thousands of prostates. Do you think that tumors tend to grow on one side or the other, back or front? Well, uh, most people aren't aware of the fact that the prostate gland is actually two glands fused together. One's called the peripheral zone, one's called the transition zone. The peripheral zone is the part near the rectum at the back of the prostate, and that's where 90% of the cancers occur. Transition zone tumors in the front of the prostate, this is the area that gets enlarged with BPH and sometimes causes uh, urinary problems as men get older. Uh, only about 10% of the cancers occur in the transition zone, and for some reason, People have speculated as to why, but the transition zone tumors tend to be more low grade than the per peripheral zone tumors. It's a relatively better prognosis for people who have transition zone tumors than peripheral zone tumors. Uh, transition zone tumors uh, are a little more difficult to diagnose by the old fashioned random biopsy methodology because the biopsies tend to preferentially uh, sample the peripheral zone at the, at the rear part of the gland. So sometimes transition zone tumors are missed on random biopsy, and this is where MRIs shine because they look at the whole prostate. Oftentimes when we're talking to patients, we talk about getting a secondary uh, reading on their biopsy report. How often do you suggest this to patients, and there are certain criteria that would cause you to suggest that to a patient? Well, it, um, some centers are pretty reputable. Uh, if we get a biopsy from Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, in New York, we probably wouldn't bother to check their pathologist, for example. Um, if a person has a uh, Gleason 3 plus 4 with small amounts of grade 4, uh, that's sort of a tipping point for someone to try and decide whether they can safely do active surveillance or they have to treat it. So getting a second opinion to get a, a precise read on how much grade 4 is present in the biopsy uh, can be very helpful. It's not difficult to do, so we tend to have a fairly low threshold for getting second opinions. Hey everybody, it's me and our dog, the PCRI mascot, Sir Hunter. You can go ahead and check out his Instagram and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week.